Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a very unusual mystery of the center of our galaxy. For some reason, near this region, within about two light years away from the central black hole, there doesn't seem to be any giant stars, specifically red giant stars. In other words, unlike other regions in the galaxy, including slightly farther away from the black hole, this region doesn't seem to possess anything that's in some way similar to the famous star Betelgeuse. But it seems that at least one study may have actually answered the question and possibly solved this mystery, at least to some extent. Well, let's talk about this in a little bit more detail because this is actually kind of interesting. Although I can't really talk about Sagittarius A star, as it's known, the supermassive black hole in the middle, without showing you this beautiful image. This is from Nature magazine and this is also the study and also the main reason behind the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics that this wonderful astronomer Andrea Ghez won on her essentially discovery of Sagittarius A star black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. This was done about two decades ago and since then we've only been learning new things, new mysteries and also discovering a lot of other exciting stuff about the center of our galaxy and also various dynamics and various effects that all of this creates in this very unusual region. But anyway, this region is still mysterious though, and one of the biggest mysteries is that not all stars are present here. With the stars known as red giants being the biggest mystery, for some reason within about 1.6 light years away from the center of the black hole, there is no red giants at all. Even though in this region there are a lot of other stars, including pretty much any other star we can think of. But the most obvious stars, the ones that are usually extremely easily visible, the giant stars, are not here. And I guess one potential explanation here is maybe in regards to what's happening in this region. Maybe it's because of various tidal effects, maybe it's because of a lot of activity in this region and a lot of other stars that orbit nearby that these red giants are just not able to maintain themselves. Maybe that's why they eventually disappear. But at least one should have been there. There's always an exception and there should be at least one red giant somewhere. And so the scientists decided to investigate this from a different perspective from the perspective of what probably happened in the galaxy millions of years ago that might have actually just destroyed them or had them change into something completely different. But first of all, a quick reminder of what exactly are red giants and how are they different from other stars. These are known as the post-main sequence stars and you can learn and read more about this on the page I'm posting from the Australian Telescope National Facility that has a really good explanation of all of this. But the basics here are pretty simple. Our sun, for example, is currently burning all of its hydrogen inside its core, with the outskirts being extremely, extremely hot hydrogen and some helium. At some point, all of this helium is going to start accumulating and because it's heavier, it's going to sink to the bottom of the sun. When there's a lot of helium, it's going to form a large enough core with essentially a kind of a hydrogen shell on top of it that's going to become a little bit less efficient at producing heat, but it's also going to slowly expand, becoming larger and larger. And this is where the sun is going to reach its red giant stage. It's going to start growing bigger and bigger and bigger in size. And eventually the helium also starts burning with the outer shell of hydrogen going through a lot of transformation stages, including being expelled and creating these beautiful planetary nebula that we usually see everywhere in the galaxy. But because of all of this, red giants overall have a lot less density and are a lot more, in some sense, prone to being disrupted and also, to some extent, lose their outer shell or even have it stolen by something else. And so in terms of the astronomical events, it doesn't really take much for a red giant to not be a red giant anymore. Usually, even, for example, a neighboring star, especially if it's a neutron star or a black hole, can easily start influencing the outer shell of a typical red giant and eventually make it transform into something else. Here is one of many such transformations happening in this mysterious star, the picture of which was taken by the ALMA telescope a few years ago. But so, what could have happened here then? What could have disrupted all of these red giants in the vicinity of the black hole within about 1.6 light years away from it? making this region completely red giant free. Well, like I said before, it could be the tidal effects, for example, maybe from other black holes, other massive stars, or the central black hole itself. But the much more likely explanation here is actually in regards to what we discovered in the last few years. The discovery of so-called Fermi bubbles that you see right here, these very large protrusions from both sides of the center of the galaxy, 
and the additional very recent discovery of Erosita bubbles, which are even larger and even more massive that actually cover the Fermi bubbles as well, suggests that several major events happened in the center of the galaxy when the black hole was probably active. It probably became what's known as an active galactic nucleus. These bubbles suggest that a long time ago, about 4 million years ago and possibly even longer than that, something influenced the center of our galaxy and it transformed quite dramatically, changing into a very bright and a very, very energetic object. The effects of which have even been seen in these so-called Magellanic streams when we investigated the energy emitted by some of the particles and some of the stars in this region. And if the energy coming from the center was enough to do this to far away stars, imagine what it would do to nearby stars. So these very powerful jets that were probably emitted for a very long time, thousands if not millions of years, would probably have been powerful enough to strip most of the stars of the outer shell and possibly transform some of the other stars into something entirely different. And this is essentially what the scientists in this paper believe may have happened. They believe that as these stars pass through these jets for thousands and thousands of years, thousands and possibly even millions of times, they probably got stripped of all of the external material and got transformed into some other objects, possibly smaller red stars or maybe even blue stars because a lot of the material was also energized by these very powerful jets. Which is also what the scientists describe in the paper that you can find in the description below. This of course also implies that the jests may actually have a preference for these red giant stars. They might be able to affect them a lot more than some of the other stars, although in this case we don't really know the details. The only thing we know for a fact is that no red giants exist there anymore, and this is probably one of the better explanations so far. This of course would make a lot of sense too, because the gas in the red giant stars is not as gravitationally bound to the star as in some of the other objects. In this case, it's relatively easy for these stars to lose their outer layer or to have it essentially be blown away completely. Although the other explanation is in regards to the relatively large accretion disk that was probably also responsible for the loss of some of the material. As you can see in this video made by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, once an object passes through the accretion disk, it actually starts interacting with the matter in the accretion disk, and this also can dramatically affect the composition of a star and also possibly strip the outer layers of a lot of material as well. And interestingly, one of the ways we could possibly prove this in the future is by looking at some of the stars that sort of remained in the region and also some of the material that still orbits in a relatively similar region where the accretion disk used to be. There are actually stars now that orbit in this region that most likely formed from all of the leftovers of the material that belong to this accretion disk, and some of these stars do reach distances of about 1.6 light years as well. In other words, this does actually suggest that whatever was happening with the black hole, the accretion disk, possibly the jets, all of this was somehow responsible for clearing this area of about 1.6 light years away from the center from any possible stars that couldn't handle it. So basically red giants or any other stars that were just not stable enough to survive these extremely energetic conditions. Which of course is a really good indication that these regions are ridiculously powerful, especially when the black hole becomes what's known as AGN, active galactic nucleus. But at the same time, there are still so many more mysteries to learn and so many things to understand about this region because we still don't really know how any of this affects distant stars, specifically stars like the Sun, and specifically planets like planet Earth. Because we still have no idea whether this also affected planet Earth to some extent. Did it change our atmosphere? Did it actually cause potential extinction event? All of these things are really important for us to understand because we kind of depend on understanding all of this for our own survival. If for some reason the black hole becomes active again in the next few, let's say, hundreds of years, although very, very unlikely, is this going to affect our planet and, of course, our life on planet Earth? And moreover, is there something we can do to prevent this from happening? Anyway, all of those questions we're hoping to answer sometime in the future, but for now it's just a really exciting discovery and a really interesting explanation for why the central region doesn't seem to possess any of these red giant stars like Betelgeuse. And the explanation so far does sound pretty reasonable. It's basically because the black hole was just too active and it stripped these stars of their material, changing them in the process. 
But for now, that's kind of all we know. You can learn more about this in the paper in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that has a beautiful black hole on it as well. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.